of the Scoop World Order, it's Saturday night. Uh, Michigan is the first domino falling in the Ward Manual. Alster, uh, we think so. The knives are getting sharpened. Uh, the local press has been greenlighted to go uh, on the John Sanderson story that we reported uh, maybe 10 days ago, a couple weeks ago, something like that. Uh, strength coach uh, got, uh, he resigned, got a settlement. Uh, Jawan Howard uh, went after him, attacked him. Uh, Ward Manual covered it up, said it was not an issue, but it was a major issue. It's people that were actually there. Uh, so we're going to get into all that. Um, again, this is a huge story. Again, we think that Ward Manual is on his way out. And now that the Michigan folks are turning on him, this is how it works, folks. And this is why you guys tune in to Buckeye Scoop, uh, because we broke it before the Michigan site said. Um, as always, we appreciate you guys kicking it with us on your Saturday night. We hope you guys are having a great night. Uh, again, if you guys enjoy this content, please leave us a like. Click subscribe. Also, click that little alert bell. Again, we're uh, grinding away on Saturday night. Uh, Ohio State lost a coach. Uh, looks like Coach Finch is heading down to LSU. Todd Finch, who's been here the last few years, to take a similar analyst role. We're going to get into that as well. What does it mean? Uh, with Chip Kelly showing up, I think there's too many chefs in the kitchen, so it's probably a good thing that he's moved on. Uh, but we're going to get into that as well. Uh, again, if you guys enjoy this content, um, the likes are huge. Uh, sharing, if you see this on Twitter, Facebook, whatever platform you see it on, sharing it is huge. We appreciate all that. Uh, and get the Super Chats fired up, and we will get uh, to grinding. Nevada, um, the John Sanderson thing is very interesting. Uh, he's a rare dude. He's an exceptional strength coach. His son is one of the top players in the country in the sophomore class, and he's a Buckeye. Uh, he's got Ohio uh, State and Ohio University roots um, from his collegiate days. And uh, he's been up at Michigan. There's a lot of smoke around him potentially uh, being interested in returning to the state of Ohio. Uh, but this this story is ugly. The story with Jawan Howard's kid berating a trainer, uh, the strength coach John Sanderson coming after him, saying, "Hey, you don't you're a student athlete. You don't talk to an employee like that." Uh, and then Jawan Howard having to be restrained from fighting his own strength coach because uh, again, everyone knows Jawan Howard's a punk. He acts like a punk. Uh, he should he would have been fired if his name wasn't Jawan Howard. He'd have been fired you know, years ago. They're in last place in the Big Ten at a Michigan uh, basketball program that's generally decent. Uh, but your thoughts on what's going down up north and what does it mean for Ward Manual now that the green light has been given for all of the sites to start to basically sharpen the knives? Well, for people that are listening, this is why you come to this podcast. And it was so funny when we first broke this story. You know, we got the usual Michigan trolls. Oh, this hasn't been reported anywhere in the mainstream media. I'm, I'm not reading this anywhere in the mainstream media. How can it possibly be true? We're like, just wait. Just a matter. Just just wait. It's coming out. Just wait. It'll be there. And sure enough, you know, Sanderson, you know, Sanderson's been the strength and conditioning coach up at Michigan basketball, I believe since 09. So it's like 14 years, 14 or 15 years. Um, kind of a, you know, a, a legend up there in strength and conditioning with Michigan basketball. And, um, when you read his report of the, of the incident with Juwan Howard, it's absolutely chilling. It's absolutely chilling that that could happen with any, you know, employee with a basketball coach, let alone a basketball coach who's supposedly on a zero tolerance program. I mean, Juwan Howard has been in multiple altercations where he's been striking opposing coaches, players, assistants, and so because of all that, okay, we're going to put you on double secret probation now, Juwan. Zero tolerance. You can't do it again. And he does it again. And what does Ward Manuel do? He covers it up. Ward Manuel covers it up, lets it go. And so just like the alleged sexual assault stuff with the Michigan hockey program, just like the alleged uh, sexual assault stuff with the Michigan basketball program, this stuff is coming out. So when you're listening to this and you're like, well, I didn't, you know, this isn't anywhere in the mainstream media. It can't be. Guys, that's why we do this. This is why we dig. This is why we have the sources that we do. This is why we have the information is to give you stuff before it's out there, before it's out there in the mainstream media, before anybody has it. And this is just another one. So big story. I'm telling you how this is going to end. This is going to end. They're already turning on Ward Man. You, you see it. When you see as you said, when you see the, the Michigan media being given the okay to come out with this stuff and to come out with the uh, you know the stuff that doesn't you know, paint him in exactly in a flattering light, then you know his days are numbered. The Board of Trustees has decided that somebody has to pay for all of these scandals that are kind of undergoing in the, in the Michigan athletic program, and it's going to be Ward Manual. And um, 
you know, big story, big, big scandal brewing up in Michigan. And, you know, the fact that, you know, that Sanderson, you know, you know resigned, was terminated, was settled, whatever you want to call it, uh, just another huge black eye for the Michigan program. But the circumstances behind it, the fact that, you know, Juwan Howard had to be restrained multiple times by multiple people from fighting him. It's just disgusting. I mean, it's, it's, it's really disgusting. And Michigan fans at some point, guys, you, I mean, you have to have a little bit of self-awareness and realize your program is out of control. You guys are a disgrace. Uh, Juwan Howard is disgraced. Ward Manuel's is disgraced. The entire Michigan brand has been completely tarnished and um, terrible story, but don't say we didn't give it to you. We gave this, I want to say 10 mm-hmm. days ago, two weeks ago, whatever it was, we, t- we tried to warn you it was coming, but it's coming. And, and let me tell you what, more is coming next. So you just wait for it. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, it's bad. Again, um, you know, there's a settlement reach. It's uh, confidential, obviously, but, you know, we're privy to uh, some of the information. And I'm just telling you, like, I mean, when you read this thing, it is uh, – this is not good for Ward Manuel because it essentially basically says that he covered it up. Again, this is uh, some of the article, but you know, you see where uh, there's a December seventh confrontation. Juwan Howard uh, came after. Uh, excuse me, not Juwan Howard, Jace Howard, who's Juwan's son, which is even worse. Uh, came at a longtime trainer. Um, you know, he'd missed the entire season of a stress fracture, and the training staff was not claiming him to play. Uh, and, and basically, you know, Jace Howard was quote berating the trainer. And again, this is. This is according to documents obtained by the athletic. They did a freedom of information request and uh, they were able to get this. So uh, Sanderson wrote an email to Ward Manuel, who's the um, athletic director and said that Jace was berating a trainer, which again, I've been in environments. Like again, I played college football. I coached college football. I've never seen, I mean, I've seen players get upset maybe, but not berate a trainer. I had great trainers at Ohio state. I couldn't imagine even in my, angriest moments berating a trainer at any level of football but jace howard who's a punk just like his dad Juwan howard is a punk was berating a trainer caused a scene that prompted several several players to stop watch and sanderson described the scene as totally out of control in an email to ward manual this is all from the the ward manual email and uh he said the trainer's trying to, to calm jace howard down and get him to discuss the matter privately and nothing would would happen and uh then sanderson finally intervened like an adult again Sanderson is like Coach Mick. If Mickey Marotti saw a player screaming at a trainer, Mick would probably kill the kid first. But I mean, you're not like no no one no strength coach is going to stand for the training staff getting berated by a student athlete, a player, a 22 year old. Um, it's totally insane. Um, so Sanderson's trying to help this guy because he's probably a little bit more strapped up, a little bit more. You know, the strength coach is kind of the guy that's the disciplinarian on the team, so it's kind of a natural role for him to do that. But again, he said you're a student athlete. And he is a professional. You don't talk to a professional like that. That is disrespectful and entitled. Quote. He said he repeatedly that the tirade was disrespectful. He also wrote to Ward Manuel that he tried to de-escalate the situation, turning his back and walking away. And when Sanderson looked back, he said Jawan Howard came at him angry and ready to fight. Again, this is the head coach who is a punk. He is an absolute idiot, and he should be fired for this. Reportedly yelling as players and stuff. Like, I couldn't imagine a player holding back a head coach from fighting another coach. That's the most, I mean, this is college. This isn't the NBA. This isn't grown men. These are student athletes. These are 22-year-olds holding back a 50-year-old or however old Juwan. And Juwan played in 94, so it's been a long time. So, you know, again, and then continuing in the email, it was, this was sent to Ward Manuel, and he aggressively pursued me to fight as the players and staff are doing the best to restrain him. Now, my, my Juwan Howard is like 6'10". So, I mean, it takes probably 10 guys to restrain him when he's that big. He was out of control. It was an ugly scene. I had no choice but to stand my ground. I didn't back down. A few of the players and staff got in front of me as well in an effort to keep us separated. Again, like, if a 6'10 basketball player, you know, 20-year NBA player is coming at you, you got to stand your ground. Otherwise, he's going to, you know, he's going to whoop you. You know, so, again, uh, they were able to restrain each other. Uh but, and then the team started to practice and Sanderson went to his office, but it's just like, uh, you know, then Ward Manuel emailed Sanderson to reply a day later on December 10th, writing, I am sorry to hear about the negative interaction between you and John. Negative interaction? Negative? John's trying to fight him. I mean, being a total punk. I mean, you're supposed to be the head coach of that program and you're embarrassing yourself. Um, 
and stating that Tiffany Ram and Yim's assistant athletic director of human resources would be initiating a review of the incident the following day to get more detail and offer support. Manuel also informed Sanders that he would be speaking to Juwan directly. Among emails uh, attained by The Athletic, one from Raymond on December 15th states that Sanderson would be given the option to meet with Howard and HR officials to openly share past frustrations and concern uh, in, in order to start fresh. And I mean, like, but once something like this happens, like, you know, there's no starting fresh. Um, and then he told, he told me he wanted to leave the basketball program. But again, this is like pure insanity. And then on December 15th, following an HR review, the university cleared Jawan Howard of any wrongdoing in the Sanderson incident. Again, a cover up. This is what we report is that they're covering this stuff up. In a statement, Ward Manuel said the university reviewed an incident involving several individuals during a team practice. And based on an internal review, nothing was found to warrant disciplinary action for anyone involved. That is absolutely insane for a real athletic department to have a head coach fighting a strength coach in front of the players is absolutely despicable. And again, this is what's going to be Ward Manuel's demise. Because again, the knives are sharpened. The Michigan media has been sitting on this. We weren't because we have better we have better sources in the Michigan media. But this is something that's going to lead to, to Ward Manuel getting fired. Again, there's this. We broke the hockey story. And what went on with football, it's absolute insanity up there. And there's no way that Ward Manuel will keep his jobs. Nevada, your thoughts on that? Because again, the insanity is unbelievable. Well, just... I, I don't want to be the old guy that repeats himself, but to put everything that you just said in the context of an employee who is on a, a, a you know, I, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm, I'm searching for the words right now, uh, zero tolerance program. Th this is all just kind of an employee. That's not his, so it's not like this is a first time offender. He got mad and he kind of did it. So, like this is a guy who's on a zero tolerance program, just did everything that you just said. And they cleared him, and they kept him there at Michigan. That's how broken the Michigan program is right now. Just again, just game that one out in your mind in your daily life. If you were an you know an employee at a, at a business or whatever it was at your job at the government or whatever, and there, you know you had anger issues, you were on a zero tolerance program, and then you try to fight another employee. Are you keeping your job, or are you getting fired? You know, just run, run that one around in your mind for a little bit. You know the answer. You know you're immediately being fired. So Juwan Howard, who's on the zero tolerance program, tries to fight the strength and conditioning coach, has to be restrained and pulled away from him. And that eh, nothing to see here. Uh, just another day in Ward Manuel's Michigan Athletic Program. But I just laughed. As soon as this came out, I was laughing so hard because all those stupid Michigan trolls are, oh, this story's not true. It's not anywhere in the mainstream media. It's like, guys, look. We have broken so many stories. We have broken so many things before it ever hit the, the mainstream media. It's like literally every major story in Ohio State for the past 20 years, we've broken on message boards. Every single one. I called Urban Meyer to Ohio State before anybody had that, even called when he was going to be announced. And so this, this is child's play. This one was easy. We had this one nailed up. But I'm telling you, it's going to be bad for Michigan. This is just the beginning. He said, it's drip, 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 tick, tick, tick. This is how these things happen, a little at first, then all at once. But it's, they're coming for Ward Manual. This is the first thing. But uh, Michigan athletics is an absolute disgrace right now. And this whole story is such a black eye for the program as if they couldn't sink any, any deeper. Yeah, and, and again, like in, in what universe in, 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 the, in modern times could anyone get away with attacking someone in, in a, in a workplace. Like, I mean, literally that's what this is. It just would be like, if my, if my boss came at me and then I came at him and we're like going to blows, uh, like I, I couldn't imagine. I mean, you, you, someone's getting fired. Someone's getting suspended. Uh, that, that doesn't stand anywhere. They don't have to say, Oh, nothing happened. Everything's in the clear. But again, this is what they're doing. They sweep it under the rug. They're arrogant. They're stupid. They say, Oh, bet. You know, I mean, the, the, the men's hockey thing is going to break next. And I'm just telling you, like, and that involves like, um, uh, you know, graphic, I mean, that, that involves crime, you know, graphic crime. So, I mean, when that breaks, I mean, they've covered all this up I and mean, this is, this is despicable. It's gross. I don't know. I don't even know what it means to be a Michigan man, because it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. No, zero integrity in anything you guys do. And that's, that's how you, this is how you guys are. And, and you guys, you guys actually still wear that logo. That's a joke. 
It's an absolute joke. It's disgusting. And again, you know, John U. Bacon, this is John U. Bacon's uh, tweet right here. So John U. Bacon is like the, the most, he's the biggest, you know, historical um, Michigan guy in the world. He's a guy that is absolutely, um, you know, he's all Michigan. And when he's break, when this is his opinion, when John U. Bacon is saying, this is his tweet from Michigan's internal report below. It is hard to understand how anyone at Michigan could conclude Howard's conduct in physically threatening a high. And again, John Sanderson might be the best basketball strength coach in the entire country. Like he is that highly regarded. He is going to be in major demand. Um, and honestly, there's a great chance he could be, uh, Ohio state's next head strength coach. Um, but how does this not violate a zero tolerance policy for Howard Zangerish? I mean, he's literally attacking a well-renowned strength coach in front of players and in front of the staff. I mean, there's 50, I mean, not 50, there's probably 20 witnesses to the scene because this is right before practice. The players are probably in the training room, getting their ankles taped, get ready to go, whatever, loitering, hanging out. Because again, if there's a large group of players and trainers and whoever else, when they say, Multiple people were holding back Jawan and John Sanderson. I mean, there's witnesses. This wasn't two guys, uh, you know, in a dark weight room fighting each other. This is in front of everybody. So, again, the fact that you could call everybody into a room. Like, if I'm Ward Manuel on this HR director, I'm sitting there. I'm interviewing each individual person, in the, each player, each trainer, individually, separate rooms, nobody together. Give me what happened. Don't lie. And, and I'm listening to see, okay, uh, you know, Juwan started screaming at John Sanderson because John, you know, called Juwan's uh, a kid, you know, basically an idiot because he's screaming at an employee who's a professional who's probably trying to help him. Like, I've never met uh, a trainer in the history of when I played football at Ohio State or in the NFL that wasn't looking out for my best interest. When I had, um, you know, I had an ankle issue, I had a heart issue in the NFL, like those guys were outstanding. The guys at Ohio State couldn't be better. The doctors couldn't be better. So they never, they never were, it's not like the movies. It's not varsity blues. So they're trying to push me out there or whatever. Cause they knew that I was tr always trying to play unless I was really screwed up, which I was sometimes. So they always were, were above board professional and excellent. So I could never imagine like berating one of those guys ever in any tone. Um, and that's what was going on. And again, kudos to John Sanderson for having the integrity to protect those guys. Cause again, Trainers aren't usually the biggest, most ferocious dudes in the world. They're usually little dudes, little nerds, tape ankles, uh, do x-rays, do STEM, uh, do all the you know, the stuff that they do. Uh, but they're not usually big dudes. So like when, you know, uh, Jawan Howard's kid is screaming at one and then Jawan's coming in, like uh, kudos to this guy for stepping up and being a man. Because obviously that doesn't exist anywhere else in this program or in this entire athletic department. Um, Nevada, again, the knives are sharpening. When John U. Bacon is given the green light to go in on Jawan Howard um, and soon Ward Manuel, um, what does this mean for Michigan? Well, it's the it's the beginning of the end, and you know, I mean John U. Bacon is a stooge. Um, he's a guy that's you know completely in the bag for Michigan. Just says whatever they want. Go back and read his stuff during the Michigan during the Harbaugh stuff, and it's it's embarrassing. I mean, um, it's it's really really bad. But when he says something you know they want it out there. So the fact that he, they're putting it out there and it's a not too pointed uh, indictment of both Juwan Howard and Ward Manuel, then you know who's on the firing line and you know he's going to get it. And again, it's not like we didn't tell you this and we didn't, it's not like we didn't identify this. We told you exactly what was going on with this. But uh, this is how it happens. This is the next step. This is what's going on. Um, but the, I mean, the program is just completely out of control up in Michigan right now. It's a, a win at all costs. But what's so interesting with the basketball is it's like they're the worst team in yeah. basketball. So, you know, you can only surmise as to what reasons that they're holding on to Jawan Howard, past greatness, his, his son, whatever the reasons are. Um, you know, he seems to have kind of carte blanche to do whatever the heck he wants to whomever the heck he wants to do it to. I mean, I remember when Woody Hayes punched Charlie Bauman you know, on the sideline and – you know, people couldn't, yeah, I mean, it, they couldn't get rid of him fast enough. Like he couldn't have been fired quickly enough and, and, and rightfully so, you know, not, nobody stood up and defended Woody Hayes for punching a player. Juwan Howard's done it multiple times. He's done it multiple times, punching, you know, trying to attack, trying to do and you know, he's attacking his own staff and he's still the head coach of Michigan basketball. 
it's it's just absolutely it, you know you always wonder where the bottom is like where's the bottom where, when have we hit absolute rock bottom well this is this is rock bottom you've got both the football program and the basketball program in a complete state of moral tatters and um i it, it, it can only go up from here because it can't get much worse because these guys really are disgusting um i can't wait for john howard to be fired i can't wait for ward manuel to be fired um you know th- th- that'll just start to to reduce a little bit of the stench of michigan but um I, that program's permanently soiled in my eyes for for sure and in and, and, and a lot of people's well it, well and here's my thing so this was literally unearthed again we already had this we went with this 10 days ago before any michigan site before the detroit free press for anybody we broke all this so all you michigan fans are tuned in and getting blocked by the wrench brothers we appreciate you guys for listening but that being said juan howard and his program are literally last in the big 10 they clinched last place in the big 10 so with this insanity going on and with this cover-up going on again this is all on earth because of a freedom of information act request that michigan did with this kind of insanity what are they covering up with football i mean football just went 15 and 0 won the national championship so it's like you know if they're going to cover up the worst basketball team in the big 10 and juan howard who should have been fired years ago what are they covering up for football and what's that going to look like when that investigation comes out because again it's one thing to cover up uh, you know, a juggernaut that won 15 and 0 and, and won the national championship, made the school hundreds of millions of dollars in terms of donations, revenue. Uh, I'm sure admissions are up at Michigan. You know, when you win a national championship, it is real easy to ask the rich donors, go ask Stephen Ross for another hundred million dollars or whatever, because everybody wants to support a winner. And when's the best time in the world to do it? Well, when you win a national championship, if I'm the head of development in the athletic department, I'm calling every donor that's ever breathed or ever even bought a Michigan ticket and asking, hey, uh, we need to build a new building or we need to do, we need a, a war chest for NIL. Uh, would you want to help out? So again, you, you, those national championships, you, the record-breaking fundraising comes the next year. So even you know with the stench of cheating and horrible leaving or whatever, they're still going to make a lot of money just because of the the 15 and 0 and whatever. But what about basketball being in last place and they still are covering stuff up again? I think that this is going to be just an epic. Uh, th- th- this is going to be the Hindenburg. Uh, Ward Manuel is as fat as the Hindenburg. He's going to burn like the Hindenburg. And again, when these Michigan sites start turning on on Ward, it's straight from the board of trustees. It's straight from the people uh, that really run the athletic department. Because again, the athletic director is generally just a puppet. And the people that are the, like at the top, you have the donors and the board of trustees. Those are the guys that really run stuff. So when they get the green light out and they start sharpening the knives on a guy like Ward and this stuff gets out, then the end is near. I've lived it. I've seen it. We're too smart for this stuff. And again, this is why we broke it 10 days ago. Got a bunch of super chats. Going to get cranking through these. Appreciate you guys with us on Saturday night. Chocolate Chip Scucci. What is up, brother? Appreciate you. Thanks for the five. What do you guys think of the Sharon Moore interview at the Combine? I've not seen it. Looks totally guilty. Why does everyone get to act like it didn't happen? Uh, I did not see it, so I'd be lying if I uh, tried to to ascertain what he was thinking or what he looked like. Nevada, you probably didn't see it either. I'm guessing you did not watch the Combine. Did you see the Sean Moore interview at the Combine? No, I, I I did, but could somebody was was he crying? Did he cry at any point during the interview or anything like that? But no, I didn't see it. Um, I I'll have to watch that and definitely uh, give you a, give you a report on that. But no, I, I missed it. Yeah, I um. <laughs> You know, I, I didn't see it, but again, like Sharon is the fall guy. He's the guy who's going to sit there. They gave him the big chunk of money. They said, Hey, you know, again, it's like the, the beginning of the Batman movie that has Bane where they, you know, Bane solves the plane in half. And then like, they're like, Oh, we're going to need one guy to stay back in the wreckage brother. And like, you know, like Bane parachutes out and then like his one little acolyte dude dies in the plane. Like that's, that's what Sharon Moore is at this point. Cause all the other coaches left. I mean, the only guys left are like Sharon Moore uh, the tight ends coach, the south of the line coach slash coordinator, and Mike Hart. And it's honestly, it's amazing Mike Hart didn't leave, but I bet Jim Harbaugh didn't want him. So that's why he's still there. Because again, every single person associated with Michigan that could get out of there, got out of there. And again, I don't think we're done with it. I think when the hammer falls, when they fire Ward Manual, when these when these sanctions come from the NCAA, I mean, if, I, if I'm one of those guys, uh, those D-tackles or Colson Loveland, I'm getting out of there. I'm, I'm going to go to Texas. I'm going to go to 
Georgia or SC or Bama. I'm going to go somewhere that's got a good quarterback for my last year, if I, especially with Colson Loveland. There ain't no way I'm staying there. If I'm him, I'm coming to Ohio State and I'm playing in this offense and letting Chip Kelly turn me into Zach Ertz like he did in Philly. That's just my opinion. Um, but I uh, I just think Sharon knows. And again, you know, somebody had to stay. You know, if they would offer the head coaching job to the D coordinator, he probably would have stayed. You know, because hey, if you're going to get you know 20-ish million dollars to basically lock your family down for life, do it. Now you're going to stink for a while. It's going to be hard to win just because you're going to be you know under the under the gun from what the NCAA is going to do to you. But somebody had to stay. But there's a reason why everybody left. And again, Jim Harbaugh, and this is like the exact opposite of Urban Meyer. The thing that killed Urban Meyer, obviously, you know, the off the field stuff at Jacksonville was bad, but he didn't have his guys in Jacksonville. And everywhere he's gone, he's had his guys. You know, when he went to Florida, he had Mickey, he had Pantone, Voltolini. Uh, he brought all those guys to Ohio State. And when you don't have all your guys with you, it's really hard to do. Like, that's why he had to get Schlegel down there. Uh, you know, Schlegel's hadn't been a strength coach in years, and he, he you know, got off working for 97 on the fan and selling his his little sled, the difference. Um, and he had to go be a strength coach. Uh, and he was going to be the assistant. And then all of a sudden, the guy from Iowa, you know, who Urban didn't vet hard enough, got fired. And so Schlegel's went from working for 97 on the fan and selling the difference to being a head strength coach in the NFL, which is insane. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, he didn't want to poach Mickey. He didn't want to poach Pantone. He didn't want to poach uh, any of the coaches that were at Ohio State. So it made it really hard. But Jim Harbaugh did not feel like that at all. He took everybody, D-line coach, D coordinator, um, you know, his uh, his his offensive guys. I mean, he basically brought everybody with him. So way different mentality, way different uh, deal. Oh, uh, yeah, but Sharon, I think Sharon's cooked. I really do. Um, and again, he's he's going to have a lot of money. But I mean, it's going to be a misery from here on out because they're just not going to be that good this year. Tony Turley, what's up, brother? Appreciate you, my man. Thank you for being a Scoop Ultra member. Thank you for being uh, a great advocate and for writing that amazing legal paper that you sent uh, to Nevada and I. Ooh, boy, Nevada. Ooh, boy. This is going to be a good one. Gents, I've done Freedom of Information uh, Act requests many times. If you guys ever want me to pursue a request, let me know. Pro bono, of course. Ooh, Nevada. I could think of some stuff, considering we did those. Um I'll let you talk on that. Uh, that's a very generous offer, Tony. We appreciate that. Nevada, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, again, just another reason why Tony is uh, one of our Hall of Famers and uh, what a great member of the community. We'll have to really think about what we want to do. You know, the, the Freedom of Information Act stuff, in our experience, the uh, the schools are really slow on stuff that they don't want to have get out, and they're really quick on stuff that they do want to get out. And so, um, yeah, we'll have to, we'd have to really have a, uh, a rifle shot approach in terms of what we do, but that's a very generous offer, Tony. We'll, uh, we'll file that one away. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, like, like you said, if, if it's something that they know they can hide, they can basically prolong it forever, you know, uh, to our detriment. And, uh, if it's something that they want out, they can just put it out. So, um, but that's really interesting. I'd love to talk to you offline about that. Donald and Karen Rospeck, thanks for being a Scoop Ultra member. Uh, thank you for the five. So saw a program today, and they said that Michigan is in Scoop's head and that you guys are delusional and nothing is going to happen. Um, Nevada, OH. I.O. Curious what program that was. Put it in the chat. I'd love to know who was talking like that. Because, again, like we're breaking news that nobody else has, including the Michigan Beat. Because, again... The Michigan beat, much like a lot of beats, are scared to death of their rulers. Again, they are enslaved by the programs they cover. We aren't. We are free. There's no bondage on the scoop. These other guys, they are enslaved by their SIDs and these guys, and we're not like that. So Michigan's, we know for a fact Michigan's writers had this story when we had it, but they were scared to go. They weren't allowed to go with it, or else they were going to get, you know, they're going to get blacklisted from Michigan. But like, we don't care because, again, we're about breaking news. Again, we're sourced up. We've got great sources. Um, our sources are getting better. I mean, it's insane who, who we talk to uh, and the amount of information that we get right now. But, you know, I mean, they can say they're in our heads. Why? Because we're breaking stories that they can't break because they don't have any sources. You know, because, again, we work on the weekends. I don't know if you guys pay attention. We're sourced up. And we've got people, you know, we don't watch their stuff. They watch our stuff and they read our stuff because they don't have any sources. So that's kind of how this works. So they could say that Michigan's in our head, but you know, when you have one of the biggest stories in the history of college football um, and you've got people telling you exactly what's going on and how it's all going to go down, 
Like if it's a good source and they know what they're talking about and they prove it time and time again that they're accurate, we go with it. Again, we vet everything. We hear, you know, kind of the the underrated skill to doing what we do is we hear a lot of stuff and you have to vet it, know who you get it from, and then go with it if it's if it's credible. You know, because again, you can't miss when you do what we do. Can't do it. Nevada, uh, there's a program today that said that Michigan is in our head which they aren't. I mean, I don't even think about Michigan unless I get like, you know, uh, the nuclear bomb handed to me and then I like to hit the button so it detonates on top of Schembechler Hall. Uh, and that they think that we are delusional and nothing's going to happen, Nevada. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm not even sure what that even means. I just, I think, you know, look, we cover stuff that's topical. We cover topics that you guys are interested in and we can tell how interested you guys are in it by how many people show up for the chats, how many people watch the stuff. And so if, if we talked about NASCAR and got 50,000 people in here, then you know what? We talk about NASCAR every day or, or Pokemon or whatever it is. But the Michigan stuff, people like to hear about it. We're really well sourced up on it. We've broken everything along the way. On Ask the Michigan people. And again, I don't, I don't, care. I don't watch any other stuff. I don't want to. But just ask them, have they got anything right on it? And then ask oh. them, what have we gotten wrong on it? We, we, got, we got everything right. Every single step of the way. Uh, we've gotten right on this thing and uh that's okay i mean we'll see i mean you know and, and also the other thing we do with any of your michigan fans or anybody out there say if they say nothing's going to happen to say you know nevada buck will actually bet you on this so if you're willing Ooh. to put real money that that nevada buck is your huckleberry and he'll bet you on this and i'm, I'm, I'm i mean it, like real money we'll bet and we'll put it up and we'll put it up with a third party and and we'll put up an escrow and we'll, and we'll bet to see if nothing's going to happen. So ask anybody who says that if they'd like to bet, they know how to get a hold of Nevada buck and um, we'll make a little wager. Yeah. And make sure you pay your bets too. Cause it's really bad. Karma. Oh, we, 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 yeah, we, we, no money up, money up front, man. I'm not, this, I'm not taking this online. This is going to be money. People are going to be putting money up front on this one, man. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's like, you know, what, what did we say? Oh, someone's going to transfer out of Michigan. What happened? Potentially, a guy could transfer from Michigan to Ohio State. Oh, Jerry Velasquez transfers from, from Michigan to Ohio State. Boom. Nailed it. You know, and people, oh, well, that doesn't count. Why does it count? He's a football player. He's on the football team. Nevada, go ahead. Yep. Keon Sab. Yeah, Keon Alabama. Sab to Alabama. Again, like, and again, after the spring period, because you guys have to understand, like, a lot of these guys have a lot of money on the line. Like, those two D tackles and Colson Loveland could be first round picks. And I'm just telling you, if they ain't jiving with these new coaches that they got, uh, you know, because again, you went from a team that had one of the best coaches, you know, maybe in college football, maybe in football history. Because I mean, Jim Harbaugh has taken a team to the Super Bowl and he's won a national championship. Even if he cheated, that's still something. So you're going from that to uh, Sharon Moore and uh, their staff is like a D minus in my eyes. So, you know, if you if you're a one year dude like Colson Loveland and it's your money year. Are you really going to trust it to five new offensive linemen and a new quarterback, especially a guy you know like Orgy, who's a likely starter, who's not a thrower, he's a runner. So I mean, I ain't doing that. I mean, you got to be crazy, but that's just my opinion. But again, what do we know? We just projected the Caleb Downs transfer, and look what happened. Because again, I kept saying I was like, if I'm Caleb Downs, and you got to understand, Caleb Downs' dad, Gary Downs, ten years in the NFL, been around a lot. His son, uh, his one son plays for the Colts. Is going to be a star in the NFL at wide receiver. Caleb is going to be better than him. First round pick. Do you, are you really going to trust your son's development to the Washington defense and Kane Womack, who's from South Alabama uh, and was coaching at Indiana three years ago? Is that who you're going to trust your kid who's going to be a top 10 pick as a safety to? No. You want him to be in the best defense possible, to be featured, to have a great pass rush, uh, just the most optimum situation. And guess what? He did that. He came to Ohio State. JT and, and Jack and Tyler, like best D-line in the country, best cornerbacks in the country, deepest defense in the country. Yeah, like you, when you're in that kid's shoes, you don't want to be the one-man band like like he would have been at Alabama. You want to be the focal point of a superstar-laden defense, and that's what he's going to be. Um, we are uh, getting a few more. Uh, bitch again, K, thank you for the five. What were the impressive testing scores? Well, I mean, Xavier Worthy ran a 4-2-1 from Texas. Quinn Ewers is his top target from last year. That's the fastest time in the history of the Combine. So that's obviously very impressive. Uh, you know, Kate Stover did well. You know, the Combine, 
it's going to get to the point where it doesn't even matter anymore. Cause like, you know, Marvin didn't do anything. Um, I thought Cade ran while we're hitting a four, six. That's good for him. Um, you know, our linebackers were fine. You know, they weren't like world beaters, but they were fine. Um, you know, but I mean, Xavier worthy breaking the combine record is unbelievable. Obviously that's, that's fantastic. Uh, I'm trying to see if anybody jumped anything substantial. I mean, not a lot of tests because the problem with Ohio state is a lot of our guys either didn't test or they're not on the leaderboard. So again, it's, you know, what does that mean? I don't know. Um, let's see what Tommy and still ran, uh, Nevada. Do you pay any attention to the combine? Probably not. Uh, I was waiting to see if JJ McCarthy really ran a four, four flat. Like people claimed that he did. Oh yeah. Yeah. But he, he, didn't, didn't, he didn't run. He didn't run. Of so of course not. And there, not. there was no chance that that was true, but people were like repeating it. And I'm like, okay. You know, again, usual Nevada buck thing. I'm like, want to bet, <laughs> want to bet that JJ McCarthy doesn't run a four, four in the 40, but you know, I think I'm going to get no action because he didn't run, but well, Somebody's well, well, going well, somebody's, somebody's to get sucked in the draft in that, that bomb, too. And that guy is uh, never going to be a productive quarterback in the NFL. You can record this little sound bite and play it back for me if he turns out to be Tom Brady. But I, I, think, he's, I think he's a bomb. Well, like, for instance, like Spencer Rat Rattler ran today. He ran a 4.95. That is incredibly slow for a quote. You're a guy who's like a, a thinner lean. I mean, that's like what I ran. And I weighed 3.15. So, I mean, that's a really bad time. But, again... You know, I like what Marvin Harrison's doing. Like Marvin's just like, I'm not doing any of this. Why would you? You know, I mean, Keon Coleman from Florida State, who's probably, you know, him and the the, the Romeo Duzier from from Washington are the top two targets after Marvin. And and Keon ran a four six five, which is terrible. Um and again, if he just doesn't run the whole time, he's probably a top 10, 15 pick. But you throw up a four six and the question marks go again. If I was a, a top-notch dude, a first-round dude, I wouldn't do any of the combine drills. I wouldn't do pro day. I wouldn't do anything. I wouldn't do a workout. i say just go watch the tape. Because, like, a guy like Orlando Brown, who plays for the Bengals now, who I'm really tight with, is a kid I still talk to uh, a good amount. Literally, he had the worst combine ever. He went from being a first-round pick to a third-round pick. And then he ends up, you know, being a pro bowler in his second year. And he's, like, a three-time pro bowler. Got traded to the Chiefs. Won a Super Bowl there. Then he signed, like, a $65 million deal with the Bengals. So, it's like... You know, if that guy just doesn't run, he's probably a late first round pick, but he decides to run because everyone says, oh, you got to do these drills. But I'm like, those drills, 99% of the time hurt you more than they help you. So, because the people find deficiencies that make them forget what they saw on tape. So, uh, but you know, obviously Z Xavier Worthy, he ran an official four to one, which is cooking. Um, Bullet Train, thank you for the five. Evan Peters, you played Jeffrey Dahmer in the Netflix series, which was excellent. Uh, playing uh, Connor Stallions. I like that. I thought that was a great series. Um, obviously, Dahmer is a uh, obviously one of the most wicked human beings that's ever lived, but it was actually it was actually a really good show. Um, I love it. Um, oh, my God. Is this real? Michigan Chatter has Kirk. Deb, you spelled it with a U? I kind of like that. Uh, Deb Sobel, thanks for being at Ultra Remember, Thanks for the 10. Uh, <laughs> Michigan Chatter has Kirk's. Picture on their banner. Nice picture. Guy is a weasel with nothing to say. I don't I don't know who they are or what they are. I'm glad they're fans. I'm glad that they like to watch <laughs> our show. I mean, again, again, I just, you know, that's the thing that we've learned about this show is that people that love us will watch us for, like, the whole show. People that hate us will watch the show twice because they just can't get enough of us. They, like, it is, it's, it's the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's like, people are like, I hate Kirk and Ken so much. I'll never subscribe to their website. But I do watch their show every night. Their stuff's actually pretty good. But I do hate them. And I'm like, great. That's perfect. I mean, that, that gets the views up. So thank you, guys. Uh, uh, the people that, like, hate us, man, they watch us more than anybody. And, again, I don't really hate anybody. I'm just glad that they're big fans of us. And, again, thank you for the views and thank you for the likes. Um, Nevada, uh, Michigan Chatter has Kirk. I, I love spelling it with a U, too. I might, do, I might, I might change my name to Kirk because it looks like Turk with a K. Uh, there's a picture on their band on nice picture. Guys, a weasel with nothing to say. See, that's why I always brush my teeth and do my hair before I do the thing. Cause I don't want to, and I get the crust out of my eyes and I shave. Cause you never know whose banner you're going to make. Um, Nevada, does that surprise you? And are you, uh, are you sad that they didn't put your photo up too? I'm a little sad, but I mean, look, you've been working out. You've been really putting in the time and you've kind of thinned out. You're looking good. I mean, you sure. are, you know, it's like yep. you're, you're, tan rested ready to run kind of like nixon was back in 68 and stuff like that and now you're uh 
looking good. I mean, I think you could be ready to make a comeback, maybe a little NFL comeback, get out there, maybe one one final season at tackle for the old days. Well, I mean, the the biggest thing I've done to change, kind of like to, to get in better shape is that, you know, I got my wife pregnant and my wife is pregnant and hormonal. So she gets angry very easy. So when I get her angry, sometimes I, I just do it so that I can get an exercise in because she chases me around the house with a belt to beat me. Uh, she physically abuses me. So I have to run away from her up and down the stairs as fast as I can. And it really is a great way to burn calories. I mean, my Apple watch is about to explode. Cause it's like, are you sprinting right now? Are you okay? Cause you're moving very fast. It's like, well, my hormonal wife is chasing me with a belt or, uh, you know, a, a skillet or you know, she's like, I'm going to use the cast iron next time when she beat me. And I was like, man, the, I mean, the regular one hurts bad enough, but the cast iron's heavy. She said it'll hurt worse. So thank you to Kim for keeping me in shape by chasing me around the house. It keeps me spry, uh, and agile. So I appreciate that. Um, Donald and Karen Rossbeck, thanks for the deuce. Uh, thank you for being an ultra member. Uh, Big Ten Rivalry Show, uh, Nevada, OH. I O. I don't know what that is. I assume that's some podcast that probably gets like 200 views, but hey, I'll check them out. Uh, tell them thanks uh, and uh, make sure that they thank us for the cloth that we just gave them. Uh, Deb Sobel again, thanks for the deuce, Nevada, OH. I O. See, the thing about the OH, it's funny because like you, we do the OH and the I O, and it's like, I got to have Deb put an I in my name, you know? So I'm going to say, I R, that's going to be my new thing. Appreciate <laughs> you. Arr. I appreciate like a, you. Like Arr. a pirate. You can be like I know. <laughs> exactly. That's the best ride at Disney World anyway. So that's what we're out for. Uh, chocolate chip scoochie. Thank you for the, uh, the deuce. Only reason for talking about uh, Michigan is the scandal. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, we don't like, I, we're not obsessed with Michigan, but you know, when, it's basically like the OJ trial in the form of college football. Cause this is the most scandalous thing that's ever happened. Like, I mean, you guys were, most of you were alive during the OJ trial. That was wall to wall coverage of you know, the, the trial of the century. I mean, this is like the biggest cheating episode that's ever happened in college sports. So again, like, you know, that's why we cover it. And again, it's also cause we're sourced up. We don't just cover it. Cause we're like, well, Nevada, what do you want to talk about today? I don't know. You want to talk about Michigan? No. Uh, but then, like, when you get, like, this massive tip where it's like, oh, God, this is what's really going down there, and that changes everything. Again, on our message board, we have a thread that has one million views. It's one of the most viewed threads in the history of the Internet. Like, I've never seen a message board that has a one million view thread, but we have one. And, again, you guys can go look at all the competitors across all the, the disciplines. And it's not really that old of a thread. It's a few months old, but it's got over a million views because – we constantly are getting intel on what's going on. So again, it's uh, it's not just something that we're just like, oh yeah, let's talk about Michigan. But when we're breaking the stories and Michigan fans are trying to figure out what's going on, plus you guys like seeing them in pain, it's absolutely, absolutely excellent. Tony Turley, brother, what's up? Appreciate you. Scoop Ultra, man, Hall of Famer. Thank you for the five. Okay, Kirk, just how long does it take you to, quote, do your hair? Nevada, OH. I O literally no time. I mean, this is straight grease. I've never, I haven't put product in my hair since eighth grade. So it's just pure grease. So, you know, I, I usually hit a quick shower to wake up and then I uh, just do this. So there's, there's nothing in it. It's really, I don't you know. It takes no time. I was kind of being facetious, but um, you know, it is like a 4k program. So I try to make sure I'm shaved and I don't have like some giant nose hair hanging down. So I gotta keep it clean for you guys. <laughs> I'm just being real. Like, I mean, I, I see how some people look on a podcast. They look like they're about to have a heart attack and die. And I'm like, guys, like, let's go. What are we talking about? Uh, Deb, appreciate you. Thanks for the days, Kirk. So sorry. Don't apologize. I'm just being silly. Again, I appreciate you, Deb, so much. Thank you for being on here. But I am not sensitive. And I've been called way worse than Kirk with a with a U. <laughs> I promise you. I mean, you go you can go surf around the internet and see what people have called me. So I have the skin of a rhinoceros. And honestly... I think it's humorous because like owning like the frontal lobe of so many stupid people's heads is like something that I'm very proud of. And so is Buckeye Scoop and so is Nevada Buck because again, on a lot of, uh, you know, places like we're all they have to talk about is us. And so I like it. It's flattering to me, but don't, don't apologize. You're awesome, Dev. And I appreciate you being out here every night. Devin, what's up, brother? Uh, one of half of the wrench brothers along with, uh, Akeem, the dream, uh, my man, Tora, we had a great talk today. I appreciate you, brother, as always. Um, Ohio 7715, a.k.a. Devin, the keeper of Cujo, the killer raccoon. 
my brother, uh, and again, one half of the Wrench Brothers, the most dominating tag team since Legion of Doom or Demolition in the uh, 80s of the WWF. What's up, Kirk in Nevada? Appreciate y'all. Shout out to the family in the chat. I was thinking today, Michigan still sucks. Nevada, OH. I O. Yeah, I, uh, the chat is cooking. Uh, everything's rocking. Good show tonight. Um, Nevada, um, uh, Todd Finch took off today. Uh, went to LSU, senior analyst down there. He's leaving Ohio State. He's been there for the last four or five years, I believe. He was a guy who was a coordinator, I believe, at Vanderbilt. He's been with Ryan Day for a long time. Um, you know, Chip Kelly shows up, kind of uh, is now the true quarterbacks coach. Um, your thoughts on that? Again, I, I, I don't think it's much of a loss. You know, there's some people that are dumb that think it might be, but you can't really have Ryan Day and Finch and Chip Kelly all coaching the same you know, one room that's got four guys in it. But that's my opinion. I felt like it was good with Corey Dennis there because your know, Corey was a really young coach when he got there. I was like 26 years old. Um, you know, so like having a, a veteran guy in there, I could understand. But uh, he has taken a job at LSU, a similar job, an analyst job, so off the field. Uh, but your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I think you hit the nail on the head um, in that, you know, given our other configuration, which was Ryan Day, sideline play caller, Ryan Day, head coach, you know, Corey Dennis, quarterback coach, but young and you know, really green, really inexperienced. But having a guy like Todd around, really beneficial. And I, I think he served a great purpose during the time that he was here. But when you have Chip Kelly, you know, there are a point of diminishing returns where you get too many cooks in the kitchen and, uh, you know, too many voices in people's head. So I think for Todd, it was probably, you know, when Chip signed, we had kind of talked about the writing might be on the wall, that it might be, you know, time for him to move on. I wasn't sure in what capacity he'd move on. It's interesting that he's going to another analyst position, um, which, again, it just shows you that from Ohio State's perspective, probably the right time to move on and uh, probably worked out best for both parties. So I, we, we wish him well. Yeah. And it's been kind of interesting for him that he's been in that spot at Ohio state and he didn't go with Kevin Wilson. Now, he's an Ohio guy. So that's a little different, but like, you know, he didn't go with Kevin Wilson to be his quarterback coach. He, you know, there, there's been a lot of, you know, halfly moved, uh, you know, didn't go there. Uh, a lot of times when, when you're a guy who's an analyst, the reason that you're an analyst is just to kind of keep your seat warm um, and then go get a job. And a lot of times when guys are jumping off and heading to, uh, you know, like, like Tulsa, like Kevin Wilson did, they generally take the analysts with them to make them position coaches. But uh, he wasn't hired to be a position coach for whatever reason. Now, granted, making a couple hundred grand, so he's not making peanuts. But, you know, you'd expect that, that he, if he really wanted to get back in the gig, he'd be going after it and, and getting a, a coaching job somewhere. But He's going to be off the field again. Uh, there's some interesting legislation going on with the NCAA where they might actually make the analysts uh, able to coach, which would be huge. It would be very interesting. I don't know if they would cap the number of analysts you could have because I don't believe there's a cap right now uh, because they can't coach. They just stand there and watch practice and chart stuff and whatever, at least, at least legally. Now, I know in the South where compliance officers uh, have gone the way of the dodo, uh, they're coaching their face off. But like at Ohio State – analysts aren't coaching again compliance is right across the street i was a, a quality con there's not really quality control guys anymore they just call them analysts now but i used to be that and i wasn't allowed to coach and then we were very strict about that at ohio state especially coming off the trestle thing where you got whacked um so now, yeah, Kurt, can, a, can you can can you explain the difference between like an intern a uh, a a a you know a, a g a graduate assistant um, an analyst, you know, because all those things, you know, a lot of things kind of get lumped in together. And I'm, I'm not sure if people understand the distinction between the 10 countable coaches and then all the other people that are kind of surrounding as support staff there at Ohio State. Absolutely. Um, so an intern at Ohio State is generally what you would kind of quantify as a student coach. It's a student coach. He has to be enrolled at Ohio State. The Columbus campus has to be able to be at the building all hours of the day. So online classes, night classes, whatever. Um, and that's kind of like the kind of the entry level spot uh, to getting into being, um, you know, a, a grad assistant. Again, Zach Smith had done that when he was at Florida. Um, then uh, Drew Maringer did that when he was at Rice with Tom Herman. Uh, just thinking of some guys that, that I know of that did that. Because, uh, you know, if you're a student coach and you prove you're good, 
in general, um, you know, the coaching staff, if you're good, they'd like for you to stay on as a GA and kind of start growing your career. So when you become a GA, you're, you're a graduate assistant, you're actually allowed to coach. When you're an intern, you're not allowed to coach. When you're an analyst, you're not allowed to coach. And by allowed to coach, I mean, during actual practice, you can't be out there running drills. You can't be out there. Um, now, you can run the scout team, but you can't actually run drills and coach the players, which again, weird distinction, but that kind of is what it is. Um, so when I was uh, going into 2012, I really wanted to become a graduate assistant. So I took the, uh, or excuse me, going into 2011, I wanted to become a graduate assistant. So in 2010, I got cut by the Denver Broncos in training camp. My NFL career was over. I was happy that it was over. I was absolutely miserable by the end of the time in the NFL. So I was ready to start my life. So I called Jim Trussell. I said, I'd love to work with you. Do you have anything I can do? And he's like, well, here's what you're going to do. You're going to be an intern for me for three months. And if you're good, which is AKA you show up every day, you work every day. Uh, you're not clock. You're not, you're not clock watching. Uh, you do everything I tell you to do. Then I'll pay you in three months. So three months work for free. It was fine. I was in the NFL, my NFL money, was no sweat. So I get to November. He wants to put me on as a, as a quality control coach. Um, and I was like, that's great. I, I'll do that easily. Um, but as I was thinking about it, I was like, you know, it would make more sense if I could become a graduate assistant, because if you're a graduate assistant, um, you have, you have the ability to coach, you know, like I wanted to be a coach. Like I was that first, you know, three, four months, I wasn't allowed to coach at all. I had to stand on the sideline, arms crossed, charting stuff with a little clipboard and it sucks because, you know, you, there's stuff that you see that you'd like to fix and you're not legally allowed to do that. Now in the Mac, they do it in the sec, they do it. But at Ohio State, where we play by the rules and by the letter of the law, we don't do it. Now, again, that might be different now. But when I was there, you know, I, again, we were just getting smacked by uh, the NCAA with the Trussell thing. The Eye of Sauron was on us. So I was not allowed to coach. And it was absolutely miserable. So I want to become a GA. So I told Trust, I was like, look, I want to be a GA. Uh, you know, I got to get into grad school. So I was like, well... You know, I was actually going to take a pay cut from twenty-four thousand a year as a quality control coach to seventeen thousand dollars a year as a GA, and uh, so I said, if you guys are only going to pay me seventeen thousand dollars for working for twelve months, I'm getting an MBA. So I studied for the uh, um, the MCAT, studied up, uh, got a good score, got into Fisher. I'm the only GA in the history of Ohio State football to get an MBA. Because again, I was like, if you guys are paying me $17,000, I'm going to get the best degree possible. I was like, I'd have gone to med school if I could have, but I didn't have enough time. So, you know, I was taking night school at the at Fisher College to get my MBA done. Um, but being a GA was important. Now, you know, you want to be able to coach. You want to be able to run around and fix Jack Muhort and fix Lindsley and fix Taylor Decker and all those guys. And and that's the the big difference. It's like, you know, that's why James Laurinaitis had to be a GA. He couldn't be an analyst because they wanted him on the field coaching. Now, the thing that sucks about being a GA is you can't recruit. Like you can't, you can talk to kids. You can't go on the road. So I was very active in recruiting guys like Ethan Posick, who you know, plays for the Browns and uh, Orlando Brown Jr. who plays for the Bengals. And I still talk to those guys to this day. Um, but I was very active in recruiting, but it was very frustrating that I couldn't go on the road and visit them and really kind of make my mark. That's why I can see why James Laurinaitis wanted to, you know, obviously he wanted to become a, a you know, he would have his own room, but getting on the road is humongous for your career because if you become a dominating recruiter, your stock skyrockets. So a QC cannot coach, um, a GA can coach, and a, an intern is generally like a student intern. So that's kind of where the differences lie. But there is some legislation where they're talking about making a quality control coach able to coach, which would be a game changer because, you know, again, in the perfect world for a guy like James Laurinaitis, and mind you, like James Lord, I just last year as a graduate assistant made $200,000. So I made $17,000 in the Jim Trestle days where we didn't ask for anything and we really didn't get anything. In the Urban Meyer, Ryan, you know, since Urban Meyer showed up, all, everything has skyrocketed from a salary perspective. So again, it is what it is. And I'm not complaining. I'm just saying this is just a fact. Um, but in a perfect world, you know, if an analyst can coach, it's basically like the greatest job ever because you can be a coach and you can coach on the field but you don't have to go on the road and recruit. That is going to be very interesting because some of these old timers that don't want to go on the road and recruit and chase kids down in Miami and Houston and California, they just want to coach. Like that's going to be a very interesting, especially if you're an older guy, make 250 grand a year to be an analyst. I mean, 
that's the dream job. I'm just telling you. I mean, you let those other guys go make 500 grand and go you know, recruit for six months. You're like, they can have that. I'd rather just sit at, sit at home in Columbus and coach. So, um, so there's my dissertation on that. Uh, Nevada, any questions? I know that was long, but it's kind of hard well, to explain that yeah, the other way. Yeah. Yeah. And just last question is, are th- there's limits on the number of grad assistants you can have, right? But yes, the other two are unlimited. Yes, grad assistants, you can have two on offense and two on defense, or you can split it to however you want it. You can have four total. Generally, it's two on offense, two on defense. Sometimes it's two on offense, one on defense, one on special teams. Yeah, but you're only allowed to have four GAs. You can't uh, go above that. So basically, you can have 14 guys on the field that can coach at once legally. Thank you. Cool. Of course. Um, Dot on Karen Ross Buck. Thanks for the ultra membership. Thanks for the deuce. That was the site that said I was delusional. Good. Tell them to watch this podcast because we appreciate it. Make sure that they don't click through the commercials either. That helps us. Um, and also make sure that they like the content. And, and also ask them to join BuckeyeScoop.com because that would be the ultimate for, uh, for their delusion. Because, again, they're probably tired of being in the dark. So make sure that they come to the light and they learn some stuff. Sean Rollins, what's up, brother? Uh, thank you uh, for the 10. Thanks for being a Scoop Ultra member. Shout out to the service members in the chat. Love and respect. Yeah, uh, again, went to the Arnold Classic today. It was really cool. There's uh, recruiting booths for the Marines, Air Force, Army, uh, State Highway Patrol. So they're out in force. It was actually really cool. Um, so it was cool seeing all those guys. We took photos of the state troopers. I know a ton of those guys because I did the Arnold Schwarzenegger security detail back in the day with 10 state troopers and they were like the greatest guys in the world. So shout out to those guys um, and the rest of the people, first responders, everybody that takes care of us and keeps our society safe and running and you know, everything that they do. Again, people don't respect that enough and it's, it drives me crazy, but we do. Uh, and that's the beautiful thing about owning uh, the scoop with Nevada is that, you know, that's something that we, that's one of our hallmarks is we want to make sure that people recognize how important those people are. Uh, Nevada, your thoughts. Uh, we shout out the service members a lot, but, they deserve every bit of it. Yeah, uh, they certainly do. God bless everybody for their service. And um, I'm glad you got a chance to see this. I always love seeing the recruiters. Seeing the recruiters is great because I always just feel it's, uh, you know, again, so honorable when you see young people going into the service. What a great life. As a, as a person who grew up as an Air Force brat, I couldn't imagine a better existence as a kid. L- really gives you a chance to see the whole world and meet lots of people. So it's a, uh, it's a great lifestyle, great opportunities. Love, love the armed forces. It, it, it's it's really a nice event. And again, I, I I was fortunate to I did the security deal with uh with a bunch of those guys. They're they're really really good dudes. Um, like I can see like Rick Tokash. You know, God bless Tom Charles. If any of you guys are state troopers, you guys know the name Tom Charles. Tom Charles. Uh, he uh passed away recently. This is back in the day. Um, this is a few years ago. Uh, when I was uh, doing the security detail with Schwarzenegger. So he would sign it. We would walk around in these coats all weekend. And again, it was exhausting to do it for th- it's three days and nonstop following Arnold around. But it's uh, it was a good gig. I enjoyed it. Um, and again, it was good. It was Honestly, it was it was more fun getting to know the state troopers than than anything because they're, they're some of the best dudes in the entire world. And, and again, it just was uh, – they're just the best. You know, again, I, I saw a bunch of those guys today. It was great seeing them. Um, but as always, it's a, it's a fun weekend when the Arnold's in town. Jeff Perry, thank you, uh, for the 10 great job, Burke and IO with the info on the scum AD news last week. Yeah. I mean, Tony, the Michigan sites were sitting on it scared. We ain't scared. Uh, did you listen to Rich Eisen? He said Roman Wilson would run a four two something and praise JJ on a terribly thrown at deep ball, uh, Nevada. OH. I oh, yeah. I, I didn't really see any Michigan guys kill it today. Honestly, I mean, I, I think most of the. I mean, they had like the record combine thing, and I just I didn't see it. And, and maybe I missed it again. I didn't watch a minute of the combine. The combine is has lost a ton of luster because kids are uh, kids are starting to opt out. Kids are just you know like like Marvin Harrison is like I'm not doing anything. And again, if I'm Marvin Harrison, he shouldn't do anything. Like he shouldn't waste a single second training for. Uh, an Elgil, a three cone. Uh, the combine's long been one of the dumbest events in sports because, you know, you do a bunch of drills that literally, as soon as you're done doing them, you never do them again for the rest of the stuff. You'll never run another 40. You'll never run another Elgil, short shuttle. It's just some stupid thing that you do uh, to get measurables going into the draft. But these guys are good sport. Like Caleb Williams isn't going to do anything. Marvin's not doing anything. 
Um, honestly, if I was Caleb Williams, I wouldn't even throw it pro day. I wouldn't do anything. I'd say, you know what? If you guys want to evaluate me, great. If not, not. It's fine. You know, it's like if I'm Drake May, if you're a top 10, 15 pick, I wouldn't do a single thing. I'd just show up, interviews, and go home. And that's it. That's what Mar and Marvin, this is the best. This is how, you know, like players hate the media and how they spin and connotate things. Marvin didn't even do media, which is amazing. Like he, he skipped the whole podium and he would have probably been probably the second biggest crowd, you know, just because of the Ohio state thing, you know, all those Ohio state people were over there covering that. And he just said, nah, see ya. I'm going to just uh, skate on out of here, do the medical. And then Caleb Williams, who's the number one pick on every board, didn't even do the medicals. He's the first player in the history of the company to skip that. So the odds of him throwing at pro day are about 0.0. .0. So, um, Nevada, how worthless is the combine to you? Well, I listened to the Caleb Williams. I, I'm not sure if it was the interview, but I listened to a interview with Caleb Williams and boy, he came across like an arse monkey, man. I'm telling you what he was talking about himself in the third person. And there's only one Caleb Williams. And I mean, it's just like, Oh my gosh. Um, I, I, I really dislike the Bears being a Packer fan, so now I want the Bears to draft him because uh, this kid. I can't wait to see this kid get humbled in the NFL. Do you think, um, like, I, I mean, it, it's weird with the, uh, it's weird that the dude from, uh, uh, well, the, the field stuff. It's weird. It came off the board. Like, he, he, there's one of the sides pulled it down because it looks like he's going to the Falcons now. Um, yeah, the Caleb Williams thing is really weird to me because he just has – he's so, like, unlikable. And, again, he had he had a poor year this year. So, I mean, it's like you're basically drafting him off the talent. You know, I think that he ends up being Kyler Murray. Like, he'll be a guy that will make Pro Bowls. He'll have splashy numbers. But he's not going to be a leader, and you're never going to win anything with Caleb Williams, in my opinion. Now, I could be dead wrong. But, again, I just – like, I, I've seen this movie before. Like, when you're, like – when you're not a grinder and you're pompous and you act like a total moron – I just think that it's a recipe for disaster. And again, I would evaluate that. And again, Ryan Poles and I were in rookie minicamp with the Chicago Bears together, which is hilarious. That's why, and Ralph Ryan is the, the GM of the Bears, which is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life, uh, that a guy that I was in camp with, who was frankly a terrible player, uh, is now their GM. But that's a big decision, man, because like, do you pay Justin Fields $40 million a year, make him your guy, or do you reset your salary cap uh, with a rookie deal for Caleb Williams for five years. Cause that's, that's what it really comes down to, to me is, you know, it's, it's not, is Justin Fields good or not. It's, do you want to start the run now with that, that second quarterback deal? Cause that second quarterback deal, if it's not Pat Mahomes or Joe Burrow can cripple you, you know, it, it cripples your salary cap because you've got a guy making, instead of making 20 million a year, he's making 50 million a year or 40 million or 45 or whatever it is. And, and that's hard because then you have to say bye-bye to two or three really good players, two or three, you know, 10 million plus players. And that's, that's the reason why you see these guys, you know, they, they do the full breakdown rebuild. Um, and then they, they try to start from scratch and try to get that generational guy that they think Caleb Williams is. So I think it's going to be really yeah, but you know, Yeah, but, but, you know, you could do both though. You could, I mean, I saw a scenario where they could, you know, trade down, still trade fields, and end up with Marvin Harrison, Joe Alt, and Michael Penix. And it's like, would I rather have Caleb Williams or Joe Alt, Marvin Harrison, and Michael Penix? Well, for me, that's an easy one right there. You get all the benefits of the uh, of the the you know rookie quarterback scale, um, you know, quarterbacks that could be the same guy. You know, who knows where Penix is going to be compared to Williams. And Joe Alt's a foundational piece, and Marvin Harrison's going to be in the NFL Hall of Fame. So... Um, that that's where I'd go. Yeah. I mean, it totally makes sense. Again, they, they made one of the greatest trades in NFL history last year when they traded out of that Bryce young spot and they got DJ Moore, and they got, a, they got the number one pick this year and they got a first round pick last year. I and mean, that, that was one of the greatest trades of all time. And then they got a mid round pick. I mean, it's, it's like crazy how much they fleece the Panthers for, but you know, when you've got a crazy owner that spends capital like that, take advantage of it. Cause David Tepper is certifiable. Um, let me see. Uh, Chad Russell, thank you for the 10. Probably the only Space Force guy in your chat. I would bet a lot of money on that. Uh, congrats. That is an awesome accomplishment. Because there isn't many of us. Keep up the good work. Go Bucks. Nevada, we're going to give him an OH. I O. Space Force. Wow. That is that is incredible. Um, yeah. Yeah, I appreciate that, Chad. That's awesome. Again, I, 
I always love, like, the thing I love the most about this community is I get to learn um, kind of, you know, what people do, where they're from, and that is exceptionally impressive. So that's really cool. Um, thanks for being a part of this. Doreen, what is up, girl? Thanks for the five. Thanks for being an Ultra member. Thank you for always retweeting and sharing all of our podcasts. Uh, that is awesome. Uh, we're going to have some gear for you to rock when you're running around uh, Columbus. Uh, Kirk in Nevada, thank you for having a Buckeye Fam show seven days a week. And Kim, you are a gem. Nevada, OH. I O. Everybody sucks up to Kim. I don't know why. She beats me. You have to understand. She whoops me. Sure. <laughs> um, but uh, she, she is the best. She's a gem. Uh, like I said, we have a kid with a broke leg, a kid with a broke arm. She's pregnant. And then I get to do my show. So we live, we live a great life. Uh, and we're really, uh, fortunate again, the seven day a week thing is just something where we, this is just our mentality and we love it. Cause again, it's something that I know a lot of people look forward to it. A lot of people get them through their commute, get them through their workout, get them through, uh, the night. You know, if you don't have anything to do on Saturday, you can click on with us and kick it. So Again, it's a it's a blast. We love doing it. Uh, it's a blessing. It's something that uh, it just means a lot to us. I mean, Nevada, we talk about this all the time. Like, what does doing the show every night do for you? What does it mean to you to be able to interact with these with, with the people or with our supporters? Because again, that's the funnest part is interacting with everybody. But your thoughts? Yeah, it's just great. I mean, I look forward to it every night, and, and you know, we've talked about it. And I, I look forward to this the way I used to look forward to watching ESPN Sports Center before ESPN got kind of weird, but you know, where they'd summarize everything and you get to see highlights and it'd be there at night and you'd watch that. And it was funny and it was factual and you do it. And, um, you know, that's kind of what we try to emulate here is to kind of summarize everything going on. There's always something going on in the Buckeye world or something affecting the Buckeyes or something, you know, with the transfer portal and, you know, with NIL and with recruiting and uh, with conditioning, it's, a, you know, it's a 24, seven, 365 type of affair. So, we're like, we're going to be here as long as people want, you know, you want to come and, and hang out with us. And I look forward to it every night. So I just, uh, I appreciate everybody showing up because Kirk and I are going to be here. It, look, if we weren't doing this on YouTube, we'd probably be doing this on the phone talking about it. So it's better to do it on YouTube when we can share it with a lot of people and have a lot of fun with it. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, so thank you for that, Doreen. Again, I appreciate you always being here with us. So Jeff Perry, thanks for being a Scoop Ultra member. Uh, thank you for the five. Nevada. What odds do you put that Jawan Howard coaches his last game tomorrow as a scum coach? Ooh. Um, well, I mean, they'll probably let him get through the tournament, I think. I mean, because you know, everyone gets into the tournament, right? They even let the last place team play in the tournament. Um, maybe not tomorrow, but I mean, I, I'd assume maybe after the Big Ten tournament, he's whacked. Uh, but your thoughts on that, Nevada? Yeah, I'd put that this, let's just say this is his final season as the Michigan basketball coach. I'd put that at like, minus 700 right now um yeah i just i i it's very difficult to imagine many paths where he could uh survive beyond this but 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 again you're talking about a guy that's on a zero tolerance program that tries to fight the strength and conditioning coach immediate termination guy should have been immediate there's just not even any question that he should have been immediately terminated it's a disgrace but that's what michigan athletics is uh that's the state of them in 2024. It's just, uh, it's embarrassing. Well, like the, the funniest thing to me is that like, why were you fighting him? Like, why were you fighting John Sanderson? Oh, because he was defending the trainer from your idiot son who was berating the trainer. Like in what universe, like, again, you know, again, you know, I'm a dad, I've got kids. I'm sure there'll be disagreements at some point, but you know, if I know someone's a good person, again, these trainers work really hard. They work long hours, you know, and they get paid decent, but it ain't great. Um, and they're generally, they do everything, you know, Hippocratic, they do everything in the best interest of the, of the athlete or whatever. And I'm just telling you, like, there's just no way that I would ever in, in my craziest state. And again, I've been hurt when I played at Ohio state, I could never imagine disrespecting a trainer. Now you, know, you might joke around a little bit, but nothing like there's a line you know, and that's the thing is like every you know, with coaches and with trainers and with strength stuff, you know, there's always a little bit of clowning around, a little bit of goof and whatever, just because, I mean, you're all adults, but there is a line, you know, and, and that line is very clear and the players know it, the staff knows it. And this is way over the line when you're coming after a trainer. So like you'd think Jawan, if he had a brain and he wasn't a total douchebag, would yell at his son and instead he yells at the strength coach who's trying to protect the trainer from his idiot son. So again, you know, it's just, 
It's classic terrible parenting and being a terrible person and being a scumbag, which is what Michigan men are turning out to be. So again, like I've gone in on these guys, but like, what are we talking about now? I mean, good God. Like, I mean, you guys actually wear that, cl that clothing. You guys are going to be out of your mind. Steve Weaver, thank you for the 10. Appreciate you, my man. Listening from New Smyrna Beach, Florida. I'm going to look where that is. Sorry I missed this. Can you comment on self-reporting recruiting violations? Another Bu uh, Buckeye podcast report, uh, reported. Um, We talked about it when it broke just because... This is like a clerical thing that I, I swear to God, we do this like every quarter or every season, but it, it's just not, it's kind of a big nothing burger. Um, you know, it, it's just, uh, I, I'm pulling some of it up now because some of it's a little foggy. Um, you know, we, we reported that, uh, you know, like, like one of the player, one of the coaches commented on Caleb Downs recruiting, uh, he, you know, he commits to Ohio state and then. Someone said, yay, let's go, or something stupid. And, you know, he might not have, like, officially signed yet. Uh, you know, we gave him, uh, you know, Chris Henry Jr., who is at Matter Day now, but he was uh, at Cincinnati Winthrop last year as a sophomore. You know, Brian Hartline um, gave Pac-Man Jones, who was at the time Henry's legal guardian, uh, a photo edit that was taken by the creative staff at a photo shoot. So he probably texted it to him. He probably has Pac-Man's number and says, hey, here's a photo of you and – Chris Henry from the, uh, you know, the, the photo shoot earlier, he probably texted to him. That's a violation. So again, it's, it's just like dumb stuff like that. Nothing crazy, nothing bad, but it is a violation by the letter of the law. And again, Ohio state, you know, as much as I bag on their compliance stuff, they are excellent at staying ahead of the posse. Cause again, like, I think that when you self-report something, it looks way better than them finding out something after the fact, i.e. you're trying to maybe, covered up or hide it or whatever. So they report every stupid thing. Like they, they, you know, they, 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 they reported Mike Vrabel for chewing tobacco on the sideline in 2010. He had a dip in, which I mean, come on, like who cares? But again, not allowed to chew tobacco on the sideline of a NCAA contest, you know, where guys are running head first to each other and giving each other concussions. You can't, God forbid you get, you have a chew in during the game. Um, so they reported him for that. You know I mean? Um, booster contact with a report, uh, recruit before a game where, you know, on the sideline before a game at Ohio stadium in September, two unnamed boosters took a photo with a recruit and shared it on a social media website, which means, and then, uh, the post was deleted after a staff member in the athletic department noticed it during the first quarter, the exchange between the boosters and the recruit whose name was redacted in the report is prohibited as contact between schools and recruits and their families can only be made by authorized institutional staff members. So it's like, if I was down on the field because I've bought tickets before, I technically qualify as a booster and JJ Smith is down on the field during the game. And I see him and the other South Florida Express guys, Brett gets and the whole crew. And I say, Hey, let's grab a photo in our SFE gear. And I'm like, this, that's a violation. Seems harmless. Seems like whatever the kids committed to Ohio state, but yeah. You know, so they self report that kind of stuff. Again, it's a nothing burger. Nothing happens. You know, the, 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 the donor that did it will get some sort of a pamphlet that will educate them. Can't take photos with a recruit, like whatever. And again, it's some of the stuff like it's just, it's just stupid. And then the last one was Caleb Downs. Um, you know, he, uh, a staff member commented on social media last month in response to a verbal commitment made by Caleb Downs, uh, the safety from Alabama. Someone on our staff wrote great news, exclamation point, exclamation point. Uh, rep while reposting an announcement, it was a violation of NCAA rule 13.10.1.1, a bylaw which prohibits schools from commenting publicly about a recruit until he signs an aid agreement. So he committed one of our, you know, junior jet guys inside the Woody Hayes was excited and wrote, you know, great news. And that's a violation. So again, a lot of the stuff is stupid, but again, it's better just to, you know, from a clerical sense, turn this into the NCAA than it is to, you know, find all this like tattering of stuff, this trail of, you know, um, shoddy compliance work uh, down the line. So Nevada, I don't know if we'll ever recover uh, from this. You know, hopefully we don't get the death penalty from saying let's go or something stupid after a guy recruits or uh, commits. But your thoughts on exam, it's, it's a nothing burger to me. Well, yeah, because it is. It, no, this is, as you said, I think they do it quarterly or maybe biannually. Yeah. But this is not on you. This is not the first time Ohio State's done this. And every time they do it, 
it's they report they bumped into somebody walking out of a school and said hello and that's a violation or they did you know like, like this it's, it's all innocuous stuff it's all self-reported but it's not unusual ohio state does this you know at least a couple times a year um to, for every sport and so it's uh, just it's strictly perfunctory and just kind of checking boxes but no big deal and a lot of it is just so it's just so like dumb uh again like there was a, a final violation was you know last year during winter conditioning it was reported that uh you know, our strength and conditioning staff used a blocking sled uh likely for the linemen to train their lower body strength and endurance and whatever and it's like you're not allowed to use like a blocking sled like a a traditional blocking sled like you see on the field but you can use a sled that's like made for strength training. Like, I mean, a lot of you guys do CrossFit. You know, you guys can Google. There's all these different sleds that you can go buy in your house and push around your driveway and stuff. You can use that, but you can't use one that's specifically made for football. So again, it's literally the exact same motion, exact same thing. Again, this is, you know, the NCAA is so impossibly stupid, but this is like when the NCAA, they had this, there was this period of time. So I'm just going to go real quick on this, um, where back in the days, you know, the trestle days, you could either have a bagel or peanut butter, but you couldn't have peanut butter and a bagel in the same sitting or else it counted as a meal instead of a snack. So this was a big distinction. So one of the basketball teams, I think it was Kentucky, they figured out, well, we're not allowed to have peanut butter and a bagel, but we are allowed to have peanuts and a bagel. So what did they figure out? Well, we're just going to buy a peanut butter maker. Like they have a whole food smart that like you hit the button and the uh, the, you know, the honey roasted peanuts go in the machine and grind it up and fresh peanut butter comes out. So they put that in the basketball facility and that was legal. You're allowed to like sit there and like have the nuts and the peanut butter and hit the grind button. And then the peanut butter came out onto the thing and that was legal, but you could actually have like a jar of Jif or whatever, or Skippy or Peter Pan or whatever. So like the stupidity of the NCAA never ceases to amaze me. And again, it's just why you have to have like some real, like, football people in the building instead of just eggheads that don't understand anything because that's like that's just where we used to be and again it's ridiculous so uh but i appreciate that man i hope you're enjoying the beach Pooh beer 12 what's up brother thanks for being an ultra member thanks for the 10 jj mccarthy sand stallions was not good totally agree he clearly is talented but how much success was due to them always having the right play call if i was an nfl gm it'd be a hard pass nevada oh i o. Well, I just think when you have the best, uh, when you have the best running game in the country with two good running backs, big time offensive line, defensive base team, you know, like, I mean, what do you really have to do? I mean, I, I never saw him like put the team on his back and go win a game. You know, now he made some plays against us that were like, okay, but he scrambled out, you know, threw that rocket down the sideline, threw one across his body, but like, you know, he, he was kind of like from the Drew. I mean, he's a lot closer to Drew Aller to me than he is a franchise quarterback. Drew Aller, when he, we played, he was the worst quarterback I've ever seen in Ohio Stadium. He's awful. He was like one for 15 on third down. Like, you can't do that on Madden rookie mode. And that's where JJ was. Like, he's like dink and dunk, real easy, big time running game. He wasn't like some guy that had to like put the team on his back and chuck it like CJ Stroud was. Um, but your, your thoughts, uh, Nevada, on JJ? Because I, I, I just, I don't know. Like I just, I think he's supremely overrated. Yeah, you just, I mean, you have to be able to push the ball down the field. You have to be, you know, willing and able to push the ball down the field. The NFL to survive, and he just has not demonstrated any ability to do it. Now, maybe he's just been saving it, um, but he hasn't shown it at any level. Not at high school. Certainly not in college. Not at the combines. Not at uh, the elite eleven. I mean, and not in any setting has he shown an ability to to be accurate and move the ball down the field. So I just I don't know how he's going to do it in the NFL. I think that's a uh, a complete mystery to me. No, I, I I just think that you know again in the league you got to throw that thing, man. I mean you got to be you know and, and you're not going to have the the best. You know sometimes it's better when you get these guys that don't have supremely talented infrastructure. Obviously, it didn't matter with CJ Stroud; he was excellent. But sometimes it's better to get Josh Allen, a guy who was at Wyoming, bad offensive line, bad skill. Like you can kind of see what it looks like when. And when you go to a bad team, you go to a bad team, in general, you're going to have a, a terrible offensive line, average to below average skill, and they're going to be building around you. And that's going to be something that, uh, you know, can JJ do it when he doesn't have the best offensive line in college football? Uh, you know, two, you know, really good college football running backs. I don't think that those guys are great NFL prospects at running back, but I think that they're good college guys. 
uh, a fantastic tight end, two like good receivers, not great. Um, you know, and you're on a, a team that's got a, a really strong defense, a fantastic defense. Like, I mean, he didn't have to do much. You know, he wasn't like some guy that I was like, oh, you got to put the team on his back, and that's the only way they can they can win. And that's kind of the difference to me. I just I didn't think he was. I, I didn't think he was a franchise guy. I didn't think he was a difference maker. I really didn't. You know, he's not a guy that like I'm gonna say, man, I'm gonna get that guy and ooh boy, well, I can't wait to see him go carry it like you know, like a Mahomes type or Joe Burrow or those guys. I mean, those guys were difference makers. I just don't think JJ's a difference maker. But you know, again, Ryan Clark was there and he was saying that he's gonna go top five, which is insane to me because I just I don't see it. And I've seen a lot of quarterbacks and I've seen ones that have been, yeah, that guy's gonna be elite. And I've seen guys like this guy. Uh, Patriot, thanks for the 10. The Howard situation is the old saying, you plant corn, you get corn. I totally agree. I think that's a perfect uh, way to describe it. Um, Nevada, your thoughts on that? Is it uh, is it like that? You know, again, Juwan's always been a punk. He's always been a thug. That's just kind of his MO. You know, he's always like Mr. Tough Guy. Um, but again, that's, that's what he is. And now he's, you know, his son's like that. He defends his son acting like an idiot. Um I don't know. Like, are you surprised by any of it? Well, no, I, I look, I've always say that, you know, it's, it's, it's always surprising or shocking or jarring when somebody acts out of character, but for Juwan, this is perfectly on point. I mean, like you said, he's always been a thug. He's always been a punk. Um, you know, he, he's always been just, just a horrible role model. The idea that he's a leader of men um, when he was involved in the, the the biggest college basketball scandal before he came to, came to uh, when he was at Michigan, uh, I mean again it's 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 perfectly in character for him. So um, no, you no, know, I think the uh, the the metaphor is apt. He is who he is, and um, I'll I'll make you a bet they can keep him on zero tolerance, and I'll bet you it's not the last time that he physically assaults somebody because Juwan Howard is who he is, and he, he's going to do it again uh, somewhere else, but. Uh, I think after this year, it's not going to be at Michigan. Yeah, and and, and Jawan hit, um, you know, Jawan hit, uh, yeah, 150 million in his, and he had a huge second contract in the NBA. I mean, so he doesn't care. He, he's like one of those guys got enough money where he doesn't care if he loses his job, and he acts like it. You know, it's not like he needs the paycheck; he needs the, the work. So, you know, again, he'll probably get canned or play end up in the NBA as an assistant, whatever, which is fine. But again, he acts like a total punk, and his son's a total punk too. Because again, that's how he raised him. So uh, again, I think it's going to be interesting to see you know, him and Harbaugh both getting you know gone uh, in her is going to be very very fun to see. Chad Russell, thank you for the five. Uh, they, there's any smoke to the rumor that the Big Ten and the SEC will forget about the NCAA and start their own league? Well, we basically broke that that that's going to happen. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Nevada, uh, we've talked about the NFL model. Um, you know, it's going to look like the AFC and the NFC, except you're going to sub in the Big Ten and the SEC. That's, I think, where we're heading to, Chad. Uh, Nevada, you're totally with that, correct? Yeah, it's just it's that's a long-term play. I mean, the short-term play is they're going to go through these various iterations of the playoff where the Big Ten and the SEC flex. And the latest flex is, you know, this this 12-team model, this, this five plus seven, five conference champions – plus seven at large uh, is only good for like the next two years. They're already talking about a 14 team model and under one of the suggestions for the 14 team model, the sec and the big 10 would get the two automatic buys. Mm -hmm. So the, the winner of the big 10 would get a buy. The winner of the sec would get a buy, forget the ratings, forget this, forget everything else like that. And each one of the schools or each one of the conferences would get three automatic entrants into the tournament. So the SEC and the Big Ten are already flexing on the other schools because, frankly, at the end of the day, you know, we're the, we're the Globetrotters and everybody else is the Washington Generals. And so um, it's just going to be a matter of time until the Big Ten and the SEC guys say, why do we even need you? You know, we don't, we don't need you, Kansas State. We don't need you, you know, Arizona State. You go do you knock yourself out. Go somewhere else um, if you're not happy with it. So, but I think they have to do it gingerly so that they don't lose the PR battle. This is strictly a PR battle at this point in time. Um, but the next big th thing to, to fall is going to be the, the uh, demise of the ACC. I think everybody didn't, you know, if you go back five years ago, nobody thought the Pac-12 would be the first one to go down, but they did, and now they're gone. And just like that, bang, gone. Same thing's going to be the ACC. 
They're going to get picked. You know, the the, the gems are going to get picked by the eight by the Big Ten and the SEC, and everybody else is going to scramble for cover. And like you said, eventually, Big Ten, SEC, twenty four teams in each NFL model. That's what college football is going to be. Totally agree. I think it's going to be absolutely. Uh, it's going to be the way to go because again, there's going to be a layer that's going to be created between the Big Ten, SEC. Then there's going to be a layer of that's going to be the MAC and and kind of all the the also rams that are under the top forty ish schools or so. And then you're going to have one double A. So it's basically like you're going to make a layer between one double A and uh, the the cream of the crop, the superpowers. So again, it's not fair to have Ohio State competing against Akron anymore. Um, you know, it'd be interesting to see what they do with the portal. Because uh, again, like these these max schools just get pilfered in basketball and football now. It's almost a joke. Um, so I think it's going to be, but I think it's going to be good. Like again, I love, I love great football. I love great games. That's why I'm excited to see Oregon this year. I'm going to be excited when we don't have Western Kentucky on the schedule anymore. And every game, it's like the NFL. Like the NFL is 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 the, the cream of the crop in sports because every week, you know, there might be one terrible team in the league or two. But in general, it's a pretty. There's a lot of parity in the league due to the salary cap, due to uh, you know the, the revenue sharing. Um, every everyone can feel like a good team. Like I mean, Kansas City is the most dominant franchise, you know, in, in in the NFL, and they're not. It's not a major market. That's not New York, L.A., Chicago, uh, Atlanta, Miami, Dallas. I mean, it's Kansas City. So I mean, again, if you hit on the right quarterback, the magic happens, and I think that that's something that's. Uh, Super excited to see. Uh, appreciate you guys. I think we're good. Went for about 90. Uh, Nevada, we can wrap this thing up. Uh, any final thoughts? No, just thank you guys for spending your Saturday night. Um, if you get a chance to hit us, give us a like. That's that little uh, thumbs up. If you hit that, it helps other people find the show. Really, really, really helps us out um, on recommendations and kind of triggering that YouTube algorithm. So if you could leave us a like on the way out, we really appreciate it. But thank you guys. We'll see you tomorrow night. Yeah, absolutely. Those are uh, huge for us and the program. Again, thank you guys all uh, for kicking with us on your Saturday night. I hope you guys are having a great time at the Saturday night. Uh, thank you to our moderators, uh, my wife, Kim, along with Akeem, a.k.a. Treasure the Torah, and Devin, a.k.a. Ohio7715. Appreciate all three of you guys keeping it nice and clean in that chat. Uh, thank you guys uh, for uh, kicking it with us again in the chat. Again, those guys do, uh, guys and gal. Do a great job. Uh, if you guys enjoy this content, please leave us a like. Click subscribe. Also, click that little alert bell. Again, we love doing this show with you guys. We kick it with you guys every night. Uh, appreciate all of the great feedback, as always. Thank you guys for all that you guys do uh, to support the show. If you guys see us, uh, I usually put this on Twitter. I put it on Facebook. put it on LinkedIn. I put it all over the place. If you guys see it and you can share it, that'd be great. Doreen is the queen of that. She does that every single day. So, uh, the more the merrier. A lot of word of mouth uh, is how people are finding the show. Uh, so thank you. And if you guys leave those likes, again, that's also an easy way to help people find the show on uh, YouTube. Um, we're the most searched show now. People type in Ohio State Football, they find us. So it's all because of you guys supporting the channel. Uh, so thank you. Um, again, shout out where you guys are watching from. I love to see the different parts of the world and the country that you guys are watching from. Shout out to my Southern Ohio boys, as always. Uh, we're going to be down there soon. So looking forward to heading out of Portsmouth and eating at the river soon. So I appreciate you guys down there. Uh, and shout out who you guys watch with. Again, I love seeing the dynamics, the different families, uh, you know, husband, daughter, or you know, husband, wife, father, daughter, father, son. Uh, I love seeing who you guys watch with. So that's always really cool to see kind of the family dynamic. We keep it clean, keep it mean on Buckeye Scoop. So it's family friendly always. And we just love uh, seeing how you guys grow your support of Ohio State football watching our show so thank you guys uh, so very much for that again if you guys love this content uh consider joining buckeyescape.com we're the number one ohio state message board it's not even close right now uh an excellent community of very very smart people uh along with us uh myself nevada buck bill green uh the oracle humping technician we've got some major people behind the scenes breaking news each and every day so if you want to know what's really going on inside of ohio state football Join BuckeyeScoop.com. The community is outstanding, great people, and it is always on point and on fire on there. So it's always a lively time on there. So if you guys love Ohio State football, BuckeyeScoop.com needs to be your new home. With that being said, hope you guys have a great rest of your Saturday night. We'll be back uh, Sunday night uh, after the Ohio State Michigan basketball game, 7 o'clock tomorrow. So we'll be looking forward to kicking it with you guys. Thank you so much, Buckeye Nation. Thank you, Scoop family. We will see you guys tomorrow at 7. Uh, go Bucks beat Michigan. Big one tomorrow. Uh, 
senior day for the guys at uh, the Shot and Scene Center. So let's uh, get after those Wolverines. Go Bucks. <laughs>